Hello and welcome back to What's Bubbling is in I am Dr. Abstract and in this bubbling we're pleased to present oh it's a fun thing it's it's called Zim Book. So you may recognize this it's new to Zimcat02 but it's not new to the world we were doing this type of thing way back in Flash uh, maybe 20 years ago <laughs> something like that anyway. So here it is, a uh, Zim book. Let's have a, a look. So we go to, went to zimjs.com and pressed on the cat and then moved on over to Zim book here. This, this one is called Dr. Abstract Calling. And a little corner has appeared here saying that we can turn this page. So this is me dragging this page and there we are turning. So these are Dr. Abstract's callings. He likes dance. He likes pots and poses. And you can go back the other way as well. And I can also use the arrow key. So here's an arrow and that then flips. MCing and murals. Hey, there's the isomorphisms of hierarchy there. And dressing up costumes and sculpting, hanging out at art awards, wearing guru robes. <laughs> And light shows and raves and teaching and robots, roboting, and what's that? Pants. Oh, yeah, Dr. Abstract wears pants. And there is uh, the creativity framework based on, well, <laughs> on the philosophy of nodism. And hanging out in the water, making hats. I made that hat right there. Uh, disc golf and walking in the woods and castles and dragons. That's out in Halloween. I made that crown. And you guys, all of the people who use Zim, really, really happy that you're here in Slack. Would love it if more come and say hello. That would be super. And there's goodbyes. So now I'm going to click the start and it will animate back. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. So you can animate to a certain page with the book. Most of these are pictures, so, um, well, this, this front one here is a video, so it's a video in there, but all these can be interactive. For instance, this one, even though as I pull that, you see how that is, is right on the edge? You see how that's like on the edge of the book? It is interactive. So if we press it, I go to the Slam Darklow book. Uh -huh. <laughs> so here's the first book we made of Slam Darklow poetry. Who is this Slam Darklow guy? <laughs> anyway, that's made with Zimbook as well. Why don't we go in and take a peek at some code? But all this stuff is interactive. It can have animations in it, interactive sliders, dials, all that kind of stuff as well. Now, I've just done it like a traditional type book. But, uh, like I said, it can be interactive. And I think there's another one that links off, yeah, to read. So that clicks to re read. And all these things could be clickable as well, um, etc. So, very cool, huh? That's the Zim book. Let's reduce this down and take a look at the code. So it's at zimjs.com slash cat slash book dot html. We're bringing in create.js, which is what Zim is built on, and Zim cat. Zero 02. So that's the new Zim. Here are the assets that we're going to load in for the book. These are the, not quite the first two pages, the video is done a little bit differently, but these are the next two pages. So we're going to load in two of the pages preload to make sure that they're there. All these other ones, these are uh, the images for the left page, right page, left page, right page. All these other ones we're going to load in uh, lazy loading. So just as as they arrive, they arrive, but they don't make the book wait. So that that makes it a little bit more complicated. If you wanted to, you could just wait for all of the pictures to come in and then um, then load the book with all the pictures. But here we thought, hey, really, we only want to wait for the first couple pictures to, to load in. The other ones will lazy load. There's the path. Uh, you might have a relative path. Then we bring in, via the frame, we bring in the assets at that path. Mm, don't worry too much about that. This is the video. The video uh, requires the frame to be updated to play that video. 
I suppose if the video stopped, we don't have to update the frame, but we didn't we didn't bother making a distinction. So because the ticker always is on, there's no point in ever updating the stage. So any of the components, such as the buttons, no point in them updating the stage. By putting optimize true, no components will update the stage. Because we're already doing it all the time anyway. So we use the colors in two places. Right, we've got some background colors and what we've done with the colors is we've made the text color, the label color, to be the color of the opposite page, just for some fun, I suppose. <laughs> so we've used the colors in two places, but these are basically the colors of the background colors of each page of the book. Left page, right page, left page, right page, et cetera, going on through. We're applying a certain style. All of the pages will have a width of the stage width divided by two and a height of the stage height. And the colors that we're going to apply as we make the page will come from a series of those colors, the array that we just set. So that means each time we make a page, the color will, will come from the first page made, we'll get this one. Next page made, we'll get that one. If we just passed in an array there, colors, then all those colors would be randomly picked. Uh, each time we make a page, it randomly picks from these, but we want the series. Quite often we just make a series and pass these things into the series. But like I said, we want to actually use the array as well later on. You can access a series, the array that's in the series with the property, but to, then we would have still had to store the series up here, so it really didn't matter to us. Uh, we just did it this way. We made the array, stored the array, and we access, uh, we make a series by accessing the array, passing it into the series. And the labels will all have a font of that, of courier, and dark. So each of the pages get these styles. That's why we've separated it out up into the Zim style there. Here we are making a new page. This is page zero on the left-hand side. And we're adding the made with icon to that. So we can do this open in Chrome Browser Plus here. There is the made width. So this is the left-hand page. This is the right-hand page, page one, which we're about to show you here. Well, let's just close that. So it's a video. You can see that the video is playing. By the way, if we refresh this, watch the video plays. And that's like calling Dr. Abstract. Cool, huh? On mobile, that doesn't play. You, you can't play the mobile until the user interacts. So on mobile, you'll see if we go from this page and back again, then we start the video playing again, then the, the video plays on mobile. So on mobile, we would have to probably put some button saying, open the book, or maybe we make the book have a cover like this. No, so it's just a cover. We open it up and then that's interaction and then we can see the video playing. Uh, couldn't really be bothered. So this is what you see on, on mobile. You'll see it playing when you return. You know, I don't want to introduce a book with a, a button saying, hey, click here, you can see the, you know, the video. <laughs> it's like, whatever. But you, you can arrange that if you need to do that. That's fine. Like I said, we could have started it off with, with this is the page. And when you go to the page, it shows the, the, the title of it here. All right, closing this down for now. So to make the video, this isn't a bubbling about the video, nor is it an explore where we look at everything, everything, everything. Uh, but we're grabbing the source from ZID, that's uh, Zim ID, that's grabbing a, an HTML tag, the source of it, which is way down here at the bottom, right there. There's the video. Muted helps as well for that to play on mobile. Um, and here is the URL to our video. We're displaying none. So this is the HTML5 video tag. Basically what we're doing to get the video to play is, here it is. Gra the source is the video, fine. And then we have a video, which is a new bitmap and we pass in that source. Uh, with the width and height. And that will work. So basically we're uh, turning that video, HTML5 video, into a constantly updating bitmap. That's why the stage.update or the ticker.always is going because it's always changing. If you didn't have the ticker.always going, this call to the bitmap, the video would only play one frame and that's it. Well, it would actually play a different frame every time the 
stage is updated. So we need that to constantly happen. All right. Anyway, you can uh, you can look at that. That's not too bad. That's building a page for the vi with the video. Here's the second page, which has the two. We've broken down the next two pages, page two and page three, into bringing the asset that we passed in. So these are the assets that we loaded already. We're scaling it to the page two, 75%, positioning it in a certain place, and adding a label. We're grabbing colors three and colors two. So this is, colors two would be the color of this page, but we grab the color from the next page and show it in the label. And here we grab the color from the last page and show it in the label. So whenever we show colors, we're swapping them. These are two sort of semi-custom ones because we've already loaded the stuff. Uh, we then throw those pages into an array called pages. Basically, if you wanted to load into the book a bunch of pictures, it would be it'd be done already. We, we you know we, we already have the pictures in an array. Uh, oh, we want asset versions of them though, so it would be something like asset round bracket and the name of the picture, um, whatever that might be, poses dot jpeg. Etc. So your pages would just be, hey, one of the, the assets, copy that, two of the assets, three of the assets, four of the assets. So the assets that get loaded is what we would pass into the book. Here we're preparing custom pages. Stored as page zero, page one, page two, page three so far. So there they are. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take these labels, that's the uh, the labels that I want to say, you know, put put in there uh, at the bottom. We're going to loop through the later images. So these are the images that we're making sort of automatically later on. Each time we get the pick, we make a new page, we grab an asset. In this case, it's the path plus the asset. So when we lazy load, we have to put in the URL to the picture. We can't use the path. All right? It's got to be the URL to the picture. So we include the path in that, and that's why it's different than up in here, where we've got asset uh, is just without the path. So that's really the only difference. If we wanted to, we could have put an if statement in here or a, a ternary operator or something. So that do we want the path or not? Well, if it's a, one of the first two, then we don't want the path. If it, if it isn't, then we do want the path. And we could have built all of this probably in one loop. But we'd already built that. You know, getting used to what we were going to be building, and then we decided to make the rest. Okay, I, I see. We'll we'll automate the rest of them. So here's the automation. We're looping through our picks, making a page. We're grabbing the asset. We're scaling it to. We're on that page. We're making a label. The label comes from uh, the labels at I there. Labels at I. These are the the titles. We're swapping the two colors. So a little bit of calculation to grab the colors of the fourth one plus whatever I is and then either minus one or adding one. So that's us uh, swapping. Uh, isn't that fun? <laughs> starting at the fourth one because we have zero, one, two, three is already made. And so we're starting at the fourth one, either adding or subtracting to, to make that work out. We're positioning that label at the bottom of the page and we're pushing the new page that we made, pushing the page to our array. So in this case, we had custom made four pages, zero, one, two, three, and it added them to the array. Now what we're doing is we're looping and creating a new page each time and pushing them into that array. So that handles the rest of the pages automatically. We probably could have handled, like I said, page two and page three like that as well, but these two are indeed custom. That's the, it doesn't have a picture in it. It's the initial logo and that's the video. These guys could have gone into that loop, probably, but it, since it was a little different, we left them out here hard-coded. Alrighty. Good. Now, you were probably waiting for the book. We've set new styles here. This is a background color of blue and a roll background color of green. This, these are the styles that handle all of the buttons that are inside the book. So every time we make a button, they look like that. And we're making a slam button, or we're making a batch of buttons ahead of time and adding them to the certain pages. So uh, this one got put at the end. This one got put on page 24. This one got put on page 17. 
uh, on the right corners of, of the buttons. If we wanted to, we could have taken these buttons and added them. Well, no, we made them with loops, so we got to do it after we make them in loops as well. So we've added some buttons to certain pages. We reset the style so the style doesn't affect anything else, like the, um, I think we had a header header button that was linking to the docs. We don't, we're going to make that down here at the bottom, right here, make the header so we don't want the styles to apply to that. And then finally, hey, hey, hey why we're here, right? Here's the book. So like I said, if you were, if you were making this a book of images, then it would be, hey, an array would be image asset, 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 and there would be none of any of this stuff it would all go away. That's us making custom pages. So all that stuff would go away. Uh, right. There's the some rectangle. What was that for? Instructions page one, page zero. Right. Boop. All that stuff would go away. We don't even need this. We don't need, well, you, you wouldn't need colors if the whole page was an image. So you wouldn't need this, you wouldn't need the ticker always. It would be your template, make a book. The pages would be an array of asset, blah, 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 asset, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you could even create this array based on this array if you wanted to. All right, these aren't quite the assets. You have to pass each of these into an asset to make a bitmap from them. So uh, you could easily loop through this, just a quick loop here three easy lines and there's a book. You wouldn't need any instructions. You don't need to worry about any animates. There would be no videos. There would be no header. You would end up with a page.update in there. You would end up with three lines here and one line to make your book and you would have a book of pictures. Okay, so if you're coming at this from a non-coding sense, you saw this and you might know, oh, I want a book. I tell you, it probably isn't going to get too much easier than that. You, what, we, what we should do is probably give you uh, give you a book that's like that, that's just made of images, straight images. What we'll do is we'll do that in code in five minutes, okay? So we'll do, look for a code in five minutes with Zim. It's one of our series. We will code a book with a bunch of images in five minutes, okay? And in that, we won't have all the other custom makings of pages and things like that. All right, but we'll do that then. For now, I better undo this. We're back to wherever we were. I don't know how much I have to undo. <laughs> Where am I? Okay, so undo that, undo that. Uh, I don't know, it seems like maybe that's it. Okay, um, down below here, we were talking about the book, though. Here it is. The book we give a width and a height, stage width, stage height. doesn't have to go the whole width and height, but that often works. And then we pass in an array of our pages. One is what page we want to start on here. And we have to be a little bit careful here because if we said zero, here's what that book would look like. Uh, open in browser plus. Well, you can't quite tell, but basically it is, uh, here's this. So zero puts the page here. Unfortunately, the page color is the same as the background color, so we can't quite see the page. Normally, you would make this page right here be a different color than your background color. And that way you've got nothing here and you've got your page here and you turn the book. I should just see that. It looks ridiculous at the moment or semi ridiculous. Where do we do our colors? There they are. We can just say uh, light. Well, later. And we refresh here. And there's our book sitting on the page. And as we go to the next page, there she be. Okay, so this is starting at page zero. If we want the book to start already open, then we do what we did uh, before, which would be start at page one. So page one is book is zero and one. So here's one showing. And that's how you sort of determine how the book starts. Although you could also start at an inner page if you so desire. All right. So uh, the next parameter is, do you want that little uh, curl, the little page to curl up? Uh, that helps you realize that the book is interactive in that way. When the page curls up and says, hey, come on down here. Now, you don't have to make the whole page interactive. Right now, the whole page is interactive. As a matter of fact, it's probably easiest to turn the book by just swiping right here up at the top. So uh, you can pull the whole corner across. That's the whole page interactive like that. If you want, you can set a circle 
and then only the it's only the bottom corner you can't do it from the top corner i mean maybe in a future book we will but right now what whatever you know, it's just no big deal we could have made it so that if you clicked above here then the top of the page curls but whatever so um right now there's a radius that you can put in so it's defaulting at the moment to be the whole page but you can specify that this part will not change the book but this part will you know that, that type of thing And we're putting the book on the page. If it's the same width and height, we can just use add to actually. That'd be fine. If you make the book smaller, though, you'd probably want to center it. And we were playing around with that to see if we wanted a smaller book on there and just decided to go full page. So book.onPage, here's some of the events that you can have. We're saying, hey, uh, when as soon as somebody pages, a page changes, uh, it's remove the instructions. So when this first starts, there's some instructions there. Open in Browser Plus. Here they come in, and um, although, I, so I haven't, there it is. If I change a page and come back, they're gone. Does that make sense? And we run that only once. So this is a way that you can run JavaScript events only once. You, after this parameter, you say true, and that means this will only run once, because we only need to remove it once. We also have a page animate. So there's a couple different events of when things are going. And basically we're saying if we're on our third page and we're going left, then we want to restart the video. So basically this is coming back to the first page. We're going to restart the video. So we've got some properties like that. Which, which way is, which way are we turning? What's the current page? That kind of stuff. Uh, hey, that was it then. Woohoo! And you can also loop the video. All right, that's pretty neat, huh? And that's that's our book. Let's have a look at it again here. F11. How exciting! Almost as exciting as my silver pants. <laughs> So I hope you like it. We put this together in an evening. Okay, not the whole book, but once we made the book, um, we got all collected all of this stuff. And thanks, Antonio, for the animation. This is an old animation we found of his going around. We don't actually have the animation. This is a video of an animation. And so we incorporated this video in here. Doop, doop, doop. Call it, that's a symbol of nodism. If you want to find out about the symbol of nodism, go into here. This one right here, the mechanics of creativity, all that kind of stuff. There it is, the symbol of nodism, node zero. And you can hit the read button, and um, that will open up Dr. Abstract on the medium here. Here it comes, I think. We're transferring. So this is. Uh, coding creativity on the canvas is a main one there. You'll definitely want to see that. But also down inside of here is a series on creativity. So this is there's a set of things, maybe five or six of them, on creativity. And you'll want to start with the, the beginning one here, the mechanics of creativity, as well as a whole bunch of articles on the canvas. All right, so you're welcome to come in to the medium and hang out with us there. Uh, but until then, this has been a What's Bubbling at Zim. And I am Dr. Abstract. Hopefully you like that book. I think that opens up, uh, could open up inroads. People recognize that. It's really cool. We loved that back in the day. It's neat to be able to provide beginning coders an easy way to create that book. So if you're if you're coming in from not coding, maybe this will get you started. You never know. It's it's a wonderful world. Zim is made for everybody, and we would love it if you if you have a look. So come on in. We'd be happy to help you. Zimjs.com/slack is where we all hang out. Maybe we'll see you there. I'm Doctor Abstract. Have a good day or night. Cheers. <laughs>